Hello, dear friends of the internet. It is me, Edward. And today I have some good news, and that is that I have fixed some of these issues with Gajim. I still have some problems with the software in the way that it's designed is probably where the problems originate from. But to begin with, yesterday I couldn't really connect to anything. The software was just like jammed up. And so using another XMPP client, I got onto the Gajim uh, chat room for support and they suggested that I run the debug program. Now in Linux, if you want to run that, you just run the Gajim exe or the executable Gajim and put dash V and then on the command line you'll see output. But from Windows, they actually have a separate program called Gajim Debug. So if you go into Program Files, Gajim Bin, and you run Gajim Debug EXE like that, here on the command line, you'll actually get some output. And the output didn't help me but it just suddenly started working properly. The software allowed me to connect to chat rooms and other things that I needed to do. So I was very happy with it working suddenly. And as you can see here uh, on the command line, we get a lot of output that could potentially be used to fix running runtime problems. So that's good to know. All right, so now let's take a look at some of the issues that I have with the new interface for Gajim and see if some improvements perhaps can be made for future versions. Okay, the first thing I wanna take a look at is this new start join chat. This is very different from previous versions because in previous versions, if you wanted to join a chat room, you would say, I wanna join a chat room. If you wanted to contact a user directly, you would contact the user directly. But now using one interface, you're deciding whether it's going to be a chat room or a user, but you're also deciding whether or not you're going to be connecting with one account or another. So here you can see, I have one, two, three accounts that I could choose from and they're all three connected in this particular case. So if I type in, I don't know, just a, a chat room, you can see here there are three things to choose from, which is good because I have three accounts. But if I disconnect one, um, go to offline. All right, I think that this should react and not show one of these it should just like not show it. But it continues to show like I could connect with this one even though this one is now disconnected. So if I double click in on this, it says you cannot join a group chat unless you are connected. My confusion with this because I had never used this before is I really didn't pay any attention to this that you could scroll up and down and that you're indicating the accounts with these colored squares or rectangles, I guess you should say. I just, you know, I'm like just trying out the software for the first time pretty much and uh, I'm just typing in a, a chat room. So if I only have one person connected here, status, let's go offline with this one. Now there's only one connected. And if I want to connect to support, I shouldn't have to decide between the ones that are not connected. I should only go directly here. Now you'll see I can connect. So at least that is really great. Yesterday I couldn't connect to anything. So, okay. So that's good news. And in fact, just to verify, there you can see that I've left a message and it works. Okay, so the other thing about that which has me concerned is the way that it decides whether or not this is a chat room or a 
user. So chat room domains are always different from user domains. You can't mix users and chat rooms on the same domain. So I don't know if it would be a good idea or not to include with the software a list of known chat room domains so that it can make the decision. Because as we saw in yesterday's video, there were times when I was typing in a chat room and it would connect to it as though it was a user. And that is something that we don't wanna see happen with this software. I mean, if you're gonna just type in some direction that you want to connect to, it should have some intelligence about whether or not it's a user domain or a chat room domain. So there's some different ways that you could go about deciding that. I was thinking perhaps the best way would be to include a list inside of the software itself and even having that list editable, like the user could add in domains or edit them as he goes along. So there is a very nice list of uh, chat room domains that I happen to compile myself recently. It's very new and I will leave a link to that in the description below. Someone had mentioned in the Gajim support chat room that the software searches through search.jabber.network to discover whether or not you're trying to connect to a chat room or to a, an individual user, which is decent, but I'm wondering, you know, who it is that controls that list. I don't know. And so I don't know how accurate the list is. Um, and that's something that worries me a little bit because it puts you, it puts your choice in the hands of someone else. Anyway, uh, so I thought it would be interesting to try to connect to a chat room that's not published anywhere. It's actually not even in the list that's on the server. It's just a hidden room. And uh, I'm gonna give that a try here. So, Something that's working today that wasn't working yesterday is now I have some choices that shows start a chat. Now this would be to a user or start a group chat. It doesn't seem to know the difference of this domain, whether or not it is a user or a group chat domain, which is good. I mean, at least it gives me the choice to decide which one. Unfortunately, it gives me the choice three times. You know, I have to choose between two things times three because I have three accounts, but only one of them is connected, so I can only really use one. So I'm gonna use this one, join, and there, I'm in, and I just want to make sure that if I say hello over here, it appears over here, yeah. Okay, okay I wanna show you another thing about Gajim that makes me a little bit crazy, and that is when I want to remove an account from the list, just completely take it off. Uh, click here to remove and it says unread events. This really makes me crazy because I know how to view the unread events. You click this, but it, it doesn't show anything. I mean, I don't actually, now I don't know how to remove this account because what are these events? I don't know. I really don't know what it's talking about now. Used to be you could just, you could click here, click here. I mean, if I wanna remove the account, who cares if there's unread events? It makes no difference. I should just be able to remove it. Okay, so I didn't read something. It's just, ah, that is something that's got to be fixed, I hope. That's gonna do it for today's video. I wanna thank the people of Gajim for developing and supporting their software. If you need support for your Gajim XMPP client, you can get it by visiting their support chat room, which is gajim at conference.gajim.org. And thank you for watching. Bye.